Hello, I'm Roche, and today in Homemade Science, I'm going to look at a couple demonstrations in hydrodynamics and atmospheric pressure. Now, we're going to start with something fairly simple. This soda bottle, if I were to turn it upside down, well, let's see what happens. Now, those results aren't too surprising, but let me put this one hold stopper on it, and we'll try it again. When the hole's smaller, there's enough surface tension to keep the water from coming out of the bottle. Now that's kind of interesting by itself, but I want to take that same bottle filled with water, the one hold stopper, and I can show that it still has that hole in it. We take the toothpick and add it to it. Up it goes. And now what I want to do is simply take this uh, plastic tube that's filled with water, and I'm going to add it to the one end of the stopper. I want you to notice what happens. There we go. Now I'll put this into a bucket on the floor. Now these are the same type of bottles with the same stoppers in it. The only difference is this has a short hose added to it. Why is there such a dramatic difference in the bottles? The fluid inside this tube is being pulled down by gravity. The weight of the fluid is causing the pressure inside the tube to decrease unless air is allowed to take its place. If I increase the length of the tube, the pressure inside will continue to decrease the higher we go. We can see this if I replace the bottle with a vacuum gauge. I'll attach a long water-filled tube to it and climb up these stairs. The gauge actually compares the difference between the pressure inside the tube to the atmospheric pressure outside of the tube. So on this gauge, the higher the number, the lower the pressure. So as I climb the stairs, the pressure inside the tube continues to drop. Now, soda bottles aren't too strong, I can distort one fairly easily. So how about if we try it with some tougher containers and a little bit longer hose? This juice bottle is a much tougher plastic. Let's try this one. If you want to try this and you don't have a stopper, you can poke a hole through the cap and stick the hose through it. The bottle needs to be completely filled with water. We also need to fill the hose completely with water and then attach the two. There we go, let's try it. It's ready to go. I'll drop the other end of the hose into the container at the bottom of the stairs. Well, it seemed to crush plastic bottles easy enough. Now let's give it a try with some metal cans. This is fun to do with soda cans. I simply put a hole in a piece of rubber mat, stick the hose through it. It has to be a nice tight fit. There we go. Fill the can up with water. Put this on top of it. Now let's go do this one. Now in this case, we're actually going to try it from a height of about 10 feet. Once again, I'll drop the hose into this container. Now I'm going to switch back to a rubber stopper, and in this case I'm going to use a larger aluminum can. I'll fill it and the hose up with water. I'm going to insert a pencil into this end of the tube to keep the water inside until I'm ready to go. It's all set up. The hose is running down to the bottom floor. I'll go down and pull that pencil out and get it started.
you can actually hear the water inside boiling due to reduced pressure. Here we have another metal can. Let's try this one. Well, these work pretty good. Now, let's go a little bit larger. Here's a one gallon metal can, stopper that fits it. Let's hook this one up, fill it with water, and give this one a try. Once again, I have a pencil on the other side of the tube until I'm ready to start. Since this tube is bigger, I have to keep the other end submerged. There's not enough surface tension, so air will slip by the water, replace it, and equalize the pressure. How quickly it collapses is determined by the size of the hose. It wouldn't decrease the pressure anymore, it would simply drain faster. Well, I think that's pretty impressive. Ah, let's see what the can looks like. It's nice. You guys see this? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So wait, will the thing go back together if you open it? Or? If I take the tube out, yeah. it's just going to stay like that. I want to crush a few more containers, but in this case, we're going to hook them up to a vacuum pump. Turn on. Let's see what happens. In both methods, the atmosphere applies about 14.7 pounds per square inch against the outside surfaces of the containers. The bottle connected to the vacuum pump starts out with equal amounts of pressure inside and outside of the bottle. Once the pump is turned on, most of the air is removed from inside the bottle, so the outside air pushes in and... The bottle filled with water also starts out with equal amounts of pressure inside and outside the bottle. But by attaching that long hose, the weight of the water inside the tube reduces the pressure inside the bottle to the point where the outside air will... Important note, it is the weight of the water inside the tube and how high it's lifted that decreases the pressure. The size of the filled container doesn't make a difference. It also didn't matter whether the can was set upright or held upside down. The containers carried upstairs were lifted about 17 feet. At this height, they still felt the atmospheric pressure of about 14.7 pounds per square inch. But due to the height of the water column, the pressure inside the container was reduced to about 7.3 pounds per square inch. Now we can use the same setup for the Magdeburg hemispheres. It's a ball that's been split in half and it has an O-ring inside to get a good seal. We put it together and also has a shutoff valve. Now when I hook it up to the vacuum pump, it doesn't take long to remove most of the air. So once the pressure is reduced, I'll seal it and then just take it off the pump. Now the idea is to try and pull them apart. In this case, the atmosphere is applying an inward force of about 14.7 pounds on every square inch of the surface. 
For a container this size, it's going to take about 185 pounds to be able to pull it apart. Now I'm going to complete this experiment again, but without the vacuum pump. Now when we set this up, the tube is filled with water and the bottom has to be kept submerged. So our next step is to fill the Mandenberg hemispheres up with water and then carry it upstairs and try out the experiment. We'd have to go about 40 feet high to get the same reduction as the vacuum pump. In this case, we're about halfway there. See if I get wet, Oh, it's man. squirrel. Get <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should take over a little, a little over 100 pounds. <gasps> You might you may want to pull it out away from you. Yeah, that's in case it does let loose. Man, I don't think so. Simon, you and I. Oh yeah. Oh boy. I here. Oh I was gonna make it. I'm like an extreme camera. Is this another team? Probably. Ready? You just got a video of you to ask him this video. Come on, let's do it. More than 100 pounds. Oh my God. Wow. That's okay. Just okay. the weight of the water. Holy. Now, if we took it up, if we could get it up higher, we wouldn't oh, be able to get there's it. There's no way. This came out of it. Look at your Holy feet. Mackerel. That was impressive. Is there... Well, that's pretty impressive. So, why is it impressive? Because that reduction in pressure is due to the weight of just two cups of water inside that hose.